Okay, so this is our next chapter in our Ultimate Warrior series, True Wrestling Fans. I'm your host, Mike. And I'm Frank. Let's get right down to it. Part two. All right. So this is uh, between 92 and 96. Warrior was on the independent circuit, you know, wrestling people like Her- uh, Hercules. I believe he wrestled Honky Tonk Man at some point. Ronnie um, Garvin, too, I think. Yeah, yeah. He ends up changing his name to Warrior legally. Yeah. Um, And then he ends up winning a lawsuit, which is huge. I, I think it was in... Might have been in '93, somewhere around there. He mm-hmm. wins. He wins a lawsuit versus uh, Titan Sports, aka you know WWE, WWF, and he's allowed to use the Ultimate Warrior name, and he has the rights to the Warrior I name. I think the Daily News ran the article on it. Now that I'm thinking about it, back in the sports, page, yeah, I remember reading they, something they, about it, yeah, because they used to cover the uh, WWE quite mm-hmm. extensively, and I think I remember reading about mm-hmm. that that he changed his name to just Warrior. Right, might have been the Slammer, maybe the Slammer. That was the, yeah, the uh, Slammer report. Yeah, they yeah, were the blog. famous for it. Yeah, yeah. So he ends up getting doing that. Um, there was some little rumblings that he might show up in WCW. They and uh, Warrior said that he was never really contacted by WCW. People thought that the Renegade, when they were doing the Renegade promos, the Warrior knockoff, they thought that that was the Ultimate Warrior. And Warrior himself oh. felt like they Warrior himself felt like they were trying to goad him out of retirement by making the Renegade, and that the Warrior would show up and be like, "I'm the real Warrior." But he said he didn't care about any of that. Vince would sporadically reach out to him to try to get him back, but the numbers were never right. Eventually, in 1996, he starts negotiating with Vince again. They even ran a promo. I remember this. At the end of Superstars of Wrestling, I can't find it anywhere. I wish I saw the VHS tape, but I lent it to a friend of mine, and he never gave it back to me. This is like 25 years ago, however long it was, maybe longer. Um, And they said, is the Ultimate Warrior coming back? And they show like a little clip of him running to the ring. Find out next week. And he didn't hear anything. Yeah, actually, I do remember that now. And then months later, they announced that he was coming back. Now, Vince had negotiated with the Warrior back and forth. He said, okay, he would agree to something. Then he would send them a contract. And the contract wouldn't be anything like what he agreed to him, agreed with. So then it wasn't going well. Eventually, Linda McMahon steps in. He had a lot of respect for Linda McMahon, who ultimately later on actually ends up inducting him into the Hall of Fame. So he had a good relationship with her. They came to an agreement where... He had a special contract. Uh, he was getting paid a good amount of money. Also, he was able to promote his Warrior University on WWE television. He was able to promote his comic book as well, which is something he was working really hard on. And there would be two separate um, sort of entities where you would have the Ultimate Warrior, which was um, Feel the Power was what, what his, um, his catchphrase was in wrestling, but Always Believe was like Warrior Creations and Warrior Productions. And they weren't allowed to use um warrior wasn't allowed to use fuel the power and wwe was not allowed to use always believe on any sort of wwe marketing it was two separate entities they worked out a good schedule for him and everything like that and so going forward they thought well warrior thought it was going to be smooth sailing so that brings us to his return 1996 at wrestlemania yep he returned march 31st 1996 in a match defeating triple h in what looked like a squash match because i mean he barely had his jacket off when uh, Triple H attacked him, or Hunt, I'm sorry, heard the Hurst Helmsley at the time, uh, he gave him the pedigree. He just bounced right back up from it, and I think it was like a two-minute match, if that. Warrior gets the win, and off he goes. And I really thought it, w- it could have been a little long for his return. I mean, you barely saw him. And I remember Jerry Lawler stating while uh, Helmsley was heading to the ring that he's telling McMahon, Oh, I know it from my good sources that he's bald and 400 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, we all know well, well what you know Jerry Lawler on the mic was. So, and, but when this music hit, man, it's like the fans never forgot. No, man, the ovation, the uh, ovation was incredible. His interest was was incredible. Um, yeah, it could have been longer, but you know, it was basically reestablishing the character as an unstoppable force. Um, there's a couple of different variations of why that match went the way it went. Triple H says he went to him backstage. He gave him some advice, and the warrior basically, like, he blew him off. Um, so he wasn't supposed to get squashed, apparently, according to um, Bruce Pritchard. But the warrior's version of events was, yes, he did have a conversation with Triple H. He said that Triple H didn't say anything. He was just like, oh, okay. He explained to him, like, look, this is how I'm coming back. I got to reestablish, you know, Ultimate Warrior. You haven't seen me in a while. He said that Triple H didn't have a problem with it. And then Triple H told, I believe, Pat Patterson, and then he comes in later on with Pat Patterson and he couldn't believe it. Cause he's like, if you had, he told triple H to his face, he said, if you had a problem 
with the match, you should have told me instead of just saying, okay, and then you go to Pat Patterson and then you come in here, you talk to me like a man. If you have a problem with it, next time, tell me. And he said, he basically, basically blew both of them off after that and did what he did. And he said that he could understand why Triple H would be upset. He could understand, you know, he, don't, he doesn't want to get squashed like that. But at the same time, he felt like, hey, come to me as a man. If you had a problem, why are you going to run to one of Vince's stooges? Exactly. So that's basically was, what happened. It, it was what it was. Yeah. In any event, we got another Ultimate Warrior WrestleMania victory. Unfortunately, that would be the final WrestleMania victory. Yeah. Um, a week later on Monday Night Raw, April 8th, 1996, he made his return to Monday Night Raw. Actually, his first appearance ever on Monday Night Raw. And he credited the fans, or he has, he called it, the voices of the Warriors for his return. Um, unfortunately. You, you spoke to me. Yeah. You spoke, all of you spoke to me. Yeah. I love that back. promo. I love yeah. that promo. Love it. He, yeah, it was definitely a good one. And unfortunately, it wasn't long, long after he started talking that his first feud would hit the ring. And unfortunately, and I didn't like the feuds that he had in this return, especially this one. Um, it was Goldust, and at the yeah. time, Intercontinental Champion Goldust. Yes, yes. Which you kind of thought when I saw it. I don't know how you felt. I felt like, oh, okay, they're setting up another Intercontinental Championship run for the Warriors. Eventually, I they'll... thought that, but then after the match, yeah, and I'm like, then what was the point of doing this? Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, he got he goes into the program with, with uh, Goldust. Uh, do you remember when he calls him, uh, you sick freak? Remember that? Yes. Oh, he he he's told him quite a few things. And what was the funniest was Goldust tells him in the ring, you and I are going to make a full screen movie, big boy. Yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, we're going to make a movie. He said, me kicking your ass from beginning to end yeah. and then just started walloping on him. And then, you know, what's interesting about that is you could see the signs of the attitude error and little things like this. It was that, starting. That it was coming. It was coming. Yeah. It, and I, it, they, they started niching away at it. And I really believe yeah. in 1997 that happened because if you if you look at starting at the Rumble, all the wrestlers were kind of more angry, <clears throat> more serious, more determined. Yeah, you would see like, like you, could, you could see the vibe kind of changing as it was escalating into the Attitude Era. So they were trying certain things. A little I mean, by they little. Had to. They, they had to change with the times. And this was the first time anybody ever heard Warrior talk like that. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. What, what is this? But it was really good. Um, he, he did challenge Goldust for the Intercontinental title, which, again, I thought, okay, he's going to get a third run with it. That was in your house, I believe. Yeah, and he won by count out. Yeah, but you know, you know why that match was bad? Remember how long it took that match to get started? Yes, I uh, remember. The back and forth and... Warrior was sitting. Then the Warrior's, games Warrior's the, smoking a cigar. Cigar, yeah. He took Marlena's cigar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, it, it was bad. And, and he, all right, fine. He gets the win, but he doesn't win the title. Then yeah. why did you do this promo? Yeah, and then I think he puts Goldust's wig on, right? Does anybody put gold? I yep. think he does. Yeah. I even think it, he got the robe too. Maybe. I'm yeah. Not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this is just the same thing. Like they, they put the under. A lot of people don't know this that the Undertaker was involved in a feud that year, also with Goldust. And the Undertaker had an Intercontinental Title match, and you gotta want, you gotta ask yourself, just why? I mean, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, I didn't, he didn't I didn't go anywhere know. with it. Right, I don't know. And so he didn't. It's not like Undertaker ever won the Intercontinental Championship. So I mean, it's just the same thing here. It's like, why did you even uh, right. do it? Why was right. this man the first guy you chose? And then it goes from bad to worse to worse because the next feud was Jerry the King Lawler. Let me just let me just say something before you get into Jerry King Waller. Let me just. I don't say have much to say on this about, one because about, pretty pretty much what we just said sums it up. This is like the guy that you waste time with. They did this to they did this with Bret Hart twice. Yes. They did this with Bret Hart. One was worse than and, the other. Yeah, and then you go into the feud. You put the Warrior, who's you, you would think you're trying to reestablish him as a main eventer. He was told he was going to get another title run. He was going to get pushed. And then you put him in with Jerry Lawler, the ultimate warrior with Jerry Lawler. And I'm and I remember watching this being so disappointed as a fan. I'm like, come on, man. Like, this is the best you what, can get. What's the next? Work. The Brooklyn Brawler? Yeah. I mean, what is this? Yeah. And then so we get into Jerry Lawler. Well, let me backtrack for a second since you you just reminded me when you said another title run. When Vince McMahon had acquired Vader, <clears> and then he had the ultimate warrior back on the roster, his initial plan before WrestleMania 12 even kicked off was for, he had the visions of, and a lot of people don't know this, for WrestleMania 13, for the main event to be Warrior versus Vader, 
you know, two big guys. As far as who the champion was going to be, it wasn't quite clear. I'm assuming Vader would have been the champion going in, Warrior winning it at WrestleMania. But for whatever reason, going through WrestleMania, I do believe that once he saw what Brett and Sean could do, that's when I think he realized, okay, I want to reduplicate this the following year, which unfortunately we know never happened. And of course, and circumstances beyond the control, the match wouldn't happen anyway because Warrior wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. But he, he quickly phased out of that idea. But that was one of the original ideas for WrestleMania 13. Whether it would have been a good match for the title, I honestly don't think mm-hmm. so. Not not to Warriors, not to discredit Warrior, but me mm-hmm. uh, you know, on Vader's part. But yeah, uh, going back to Jerry Lawler, he wins against him at King of the Ring, which well, I mean, loses against him. I mean, but how about the whole setup? The whole setup with that where he. The, they're having their beef, and then Jerry King Lawler, he makes that pain thing, and then and smashes it over. He smashes his head. him, and that's when, like I said in uh, the the previous video, that's why Warrior had the hat on with the like little protective uh, cushioning, which was which was unheard of, of him wearing a hat. To right, and they made never it saw him like that before. But you know what? Let me tell you something. So they did this in the in the self destruction Ultimate Warrior. They made it such a big deal on that DVD, like oh he had a hat on, and it just took away from the feud. I'm telling you, as a fan watching it, it didn't phase me because. Warrior I just was thought already, it was different. I thought it was different. And Warrior was already starting to have that edge. And they were kind of, you know, he was a little more realistic, kind of. Mm-hmm. So him coming out with the Warrior hat, and I knew he had the Warrior comic book and Warrior University. It didn't it didn't take away from anything. That's BS when they say, oh, he, you messed it up. No, no, absolutely not. Jared, he should never have been feuding with him. What what so, took away from him was the few Goldust and Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah, come on, that's what took so, away from it. So he has the hat. You know what I like? I know what I like when he points to the hat. And he says Warrior. He says he, he talks about uh, be- the name Warrior. He says Belief, and then the Belief at the King of the Ring. I'm gonna kick your ass. Everybody was fired up. I was yes, fired sir. up, even though I was like, "Why is he fighting this guy?" But exactly, you know, it, it, I I hated that. I, I I keep bringing up that DVD because I think it's important for people that see the DVD to understand that. With that DVD, you know, they, they had like a revisionist history. Like things that happened, they had a total different take on what the fans probably felt, you know? They just put out a negative spin on everything. Anyway, so they have the match, which is another waste. Yeah. With the Warrior. So, and then um, shortly after that, around July, he started being involved in the feud with the Cornette clan. On July 8th, he, on Monday Night Raw, he... But he defeated Owen Hart, which pretty much now yeah. put him involved in the feud, which was going to land in what I think would have been one of the greatest matches, at least for the in your houses. Yeah, they well at the King of the Ring didn't um didn't Warrior and Ahmed Johnson come out to save um Shawn Michaels? They came out to save save Shawn, yeah, okay. yeah. And then it was it was funny because they did that in one skit, and then there was another skit two weeks later where Sean's getting beat down and it was Ahmed and now Psycho Sid was coming out well, to to help and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But the mat he was scheduled a team with Shawn Michaels and Ahmed Johnson to face Owen Hart, the British Bulldog and Vader at in your house. And now this is where it gets again like we discussed in the, in the first part he said she said and here, here again, this is one version of it. You'll give the other. Mm-hmm. Now, WWE terminated Warrior when he no-showed several house shows and taking time off, allegedly to grieve his father's death. Now, according to Vince McMahon, he claimed Warrior hadn't seen his father in 10 years and he didn't care much for him and thus didn't take the, you know, he didn't kind of, he didn't believe it. Mm-hmm. That was the reason why. And... War, later on, Warrior disputed the claim, stating that the real reason had uh, he no-showed those events um, was a breach of contract by McMahon, in which the company sold his merchandise without Warrior getting his his percentage. And I mean, now now we're going back and forth as far as which one it goes to. I mean, I don't know. And then he was replaced by Psycho Sid in the match. And obviously, the rest is history. Okay, so here's the thing. So I've seen Warrior shoot interviews, read his interviews and stuff like that. Okay. Here's the thing with the whole thing with the father. Like, let's just hypothetically say like, oh, you you were estranged from your father in 10 years. If the guy passes away, that doesn't mean that you're just going to be like, oh, I don't want to see him. I don't care. It might hit you. It might hit you because it's still your father at the end of the day. Regardless of you had a bad relationship with him or not, it still might hit you. So you don't. So uh, that whole thing about Vince, oh, well, you didn't. He wasn't close with his father. Nonsense. Second part of it, 
he was in breach of contract. What happened was there was a New York City licensing show that all the wrestlers usually go to, a big, big licensing show. And Warrior said he was going to go. And one of the agents, I forget the agent's name, told him, oh, no, you don't have to go. You Don't, don't go, don't go. And Warrior's like, why do, they, why do they not want me to go to this event? He ends up going with his wife, and he saw that they had the Always Believe, which was his copyright, his trademark. The Always Believe was being used by the WWF. And WWF was not allowed, under their terms, was not allowed to use the Always Believe. And they had it in the big letters, and they had it everywhere. And he got furious. And that's when he, he called up Vince and everything. He said, listen, you're in breach of contract. We already had discussed this. And then it was a back and forth. Linda didn't want to call him. She called him back. Eventually gets Vince gets on the phone. And Vince was like, oh, well, you know, it was a mistake. And, you know, shit happens, whatever. And he kind of like blew him off. And that's what happened. And they go through the whole litig litigation. And then they did that. He was livid when they did that, did that thing with Gorilla Monsoon, where Gorilla Monsoon did the voiceover. Uh, remember, Raw was pre-taped. So you had Warrior Wrestling while Gorilla Monsoon is saying, and the warrior has been suspended. And after this match, you know, he won't, he has to post a bond promising that he's going to show up to the matches or whatever. And that's, that's what really happened. And he felt like his, if they would have rectified it, he would have done all the shows that he was supposed to do, but they were in breach of contract. That's what happened. And I believe warrior's version of what happened. I think I do too. To be honest, yeah, yeah. I just I, I, it makes I, sense. It makes I sense mean, when you Vince. Vince is a family man. Regardless if he was estranged to his father or not, why would if it all went down the way he went down? Why wouldn't you um, allow it? Because he, if he went, if you know he was estranged from him, he's being the better person. I just don't. I, I don't understand that part from Vince. Because again, like I just said, he's a family man. So by the way, I he was just, in, he was in breach of he was in breach of contract. You know, the thing about Warrior, if you know anything about the guy, he's got principles, man. And if he said, if you tell him or you sign this and you say, I'm going to do this, you better do it. And, and Vince reneged, you know, and Vince does that to everybody. Again, this is not the only time. Do I got to mention Brett the Hitman Hart? <laughs> I'm not going to get into it, but it's multiple wrestlers that he has these issues with. And, and he was the only one to actually stand up to him because he had principles, you know? So he ultimately, he gets canned as a result of it. Yeah. You know? And you know he's he never wrestled. That, that that great return ended after what was four, not even four months. It's like three and a half. Yeah, he was only there for a little it while. Was three paper three pay per views because remember, besides fighting Goldust at the King of the Ring, he they also had a King of the Ring qualifying match too. That's right. That, That's that right. Ended, it ended in a in a squash. Yeah. And at that point, they didn't do like a Mr. Perfect and Doink where they, oh, we'll just have you wrestle again. No, they picked right. two other guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'll get into it when we do King of the Ring review. There was another match on that on that one that the same thing happened. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, okay, now the two of them aren't going to King of the Ring, we'll have an Intercontinental title match. But, I mean, from the word jump, with the exception of Triple H, which was, you know, fine for me because I'm a Triple H fan, so I actually like the match. Imagine if it was the Ultimate Warrior versus the game. You know what the, what the better outcome would have been, and I know a few people are going to laugh at me in this because they believe you know they believe what they want to believe about the man. So uh, um, I just I, I think that the start was very good as far as bringing him in, but right. the caliber of guys you gave him after the fact, no. Owen was I, the I, only I, one. The only oh one yeah, one and I think one. I think it should have automatically started with the Cornet clan. Yeah. And you, you fight Bulldog, you fight Owen, you, you lead up to Vader. You, 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 you just you, you start giving them these guys. You don't give them gold dust and a ring announcer. It's just you, this guy just it's it's no, it just doesn't fit him. You know what it was? It was like they they to me, I'm just speculating. They signed him only because of the fact that all those guys started jumping to WCW. They already knew Nash was on his way there. They already knew well, Hall was on his I way did, there. Yeah. The negotiations, it was already like done deal, right? Yeah. So Vince and Hogan was already over there. Not Macho to mention, Man wasn't Macho not Man to mention was really, yeah. And Razor wasn't going to be at uh, WrestleMania. Right. So they're like, his thing, so. they're like, we need this, we need some more star power. We need some nostalgia. Let's bring Warrior back and we'll figure out the rest later. And they never figured it out. And they kind of, in a way, they kind of set him up to fail. They did the whole breach of contract thing. Who knows what that warrior run could have been? Because he already I mean, had that. Years that could have been. And he already had that edge. So I think he would have fit into the attitude era because he already he, oh, yeah. he had the, he he was already showing the edge. He was already showing the edge. I mean, imagine 
him against The Rock, Austin, Undertaker. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the matches were endless. I mean, him against Shawn Michaels. Yeah. I mean, so, they could have had a title match that Survivor Series instead of Psycho Sid. Because honestly, I think that's where it was going to land. I think because Sid had helped them and all of a sudden he felt it was his time after helping him that he gets his title shot. Imagine if it was Warrior that turned around and said, I, I deserve that shot. Right. And he goes into Madison Square Garden. He beats Shawn Michaels for the mm-hmm. championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th- there's a whole bunch of pl- possibilities with the Attitude Era just on the horizon. And unfortunately, we only got less than three months with them. Mm-hmm. Again, that was it. yeah, that was uh, that was Warriors' uh, 1996 run, very disappointing. And unfortunately, uh, we wouldn't see him again back in the WWE till 2014, yeah. and that was an unfortunate night after the, the WrestleMania 30, and we'll get to that later on about what happened there. But it just, and everybody, I'm sure, already knows. But yeah. th- this this run was just, it was very disappointing. Yeah, and unfortunately, the next video it just gets even the- worse. And it's going to be the last in our Warrior Series, the 1998 WCW run. Doesn't get any better. Spoiler alert. But we're going to cover it. So you guys let us know what you think about Warrior's career. Or if you want to just focus on 1996 on like this video, what you thought about what could have been. Um, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys.